there has been tremendous progress in how we deploy CAR T cells over the last few years. As you know, the success of CAR T cells has been mostly for liquid tumors, leukemias and lymphomas. But at this meeting, what is clear is that CAR T cells can in fact also be harnessed in, in solid tumors. Um, there was a great um, major plenary presentation um, by, um, at, at one of the meetings whereby um, new approaches for designing CAR T cells that can also be able to be targeted for solid tumors were presented. The key example is a study that came out of Memorial Sloan Kettering where CAR T cells were designed against a target called mesothelin. Mesothelin is expressed in um, mesotheliomas as well as several tumors that arise in the peritoneal cavity such as ovarian tumors. What the investigators did very nicely was to inject these CAR T cells targeting mesothelin into the pleural cavity, the site of the mesothelioma. And what is incredible is really some of the results that were presented whereby these CAR T cells were safe because mesothelin can be expressed by normal tissue such as the normal lining of the thoracic cavity, um, normal lining of the heart, the pericardium. And, and these CAR T cells were not only to be safe but also to effectively control disease. So this is a major step forward um, there, are, there were also other presentations about the use of CAR T cells in sarcomas. Um, so all, all that this is telling us is that we've made tremendous progress and we hope that we'll continue to make um, such progress um, in the future. I'm presenting a phase one clinical trial results uh, of mesothelin targeted CAR T cells in patients with uh, mesothelioma, metastatic lung and breast cancer to the pleural cavity. Because the trial is designed uh, to test the toxicity following single dose of CAR T cells administered intrapleurally with the dose escalation cohorts, we were careful to monitor the patients weekly for eight weeks. Only when we documented that there is no significant toxicity following six to eight weeks, we added the checkpoint blockade and then observed the patients for any evidence of toxicity following combination therapy. And among the 21 patients, about 15 patients received checkpoint blockade. But in this, we looked at a uh, cohort of 11 patients who got lympho cyclophosphamide lymphodepletion and single dose of CAR T cells and at least three doses of anti-PD-1 agent and follow up at least for three months. Among these 11 patients, eight patients had response, a 72% response rate. Two of them had a complete response for 60 and 38 weeks. And the patient with 38 weeks, it's an ongoing complete response. Other six patients had partial re responses uh, anywhere between six months and some of them more than a year. In this study, we did not notice any significant toxicity more than grade two among 21 patients. The three salient features are, number one, this is the first car in the world of fully human components. So we were hoping to see reduced or no immunogenicity and the data indicate to that. And number two, we injected the CAR T cells directly into the pleural cavity instead of administering systemically. And three, we know that the CAR T cells at a low dose get exhausted at the presence of an overwhelming tumor burden. So we rescued the exhausted CAR T cells by addition of anti-PD-1 checkpoint blockade. Um, there are signs of efficacy once we did that. So these are the three salient features of this trial. Our trial is testing, uh, is a phase one trial testing the safety of administering HER2 CAR T cells in combination with lymphodepletion chemotherapy for patients with advanced sarcomas, meaning recurrent or refractory sarcomas. But we have been fortunate enough to have two complete responses in our patient group. So one uh, was a girl with multiply recurrent uh, metastatic osteosarcoma, um, and she uh, received a CAR T cell infusion and has remained in remission for 34 months following treatment. We have another patient um, a young boy with rhabdomyosarcoma who uh, had metastatic disease to the bone marrow. And he was treated um, and went into remission after his third CAR T cell infusion. Um, it stayed there for 12 months. And then when he relapsed, uh, we re-enrolled him since his tumor continued to express HER2. And fortunately, he was able to get, uh, get back into a complete response, which, which has been ongoing for 17 months at this time. 
So this is, although the primary purpose is safety, um, and these are very limited patient numbers, these early responses um, do give us some hope that this might be an effective product for some patients with sarcoma. So what have we learned? Uh, it's hard to say. 10 patients, a nice small subset, very expensive process, lymphodepletion, pretty toxic, though they report no unusual toxicities, but they have to deplete the bone marrow, cause myelosuppression to regenerate the marrow in combination with these T-cards, which are hugely expensive. Uh, and we have now one response. So at the moment, I think it's encouraging. I think we have a novel therapy that was we know have it's been around for at least four years. This is, seems to be the update of the prior study. But at this point, it's really premature to make any def definitive conclusions about the long-term longevity of this approach. We need to look back at our patients treated in this portion of the trial as well as our additional uh, patients who were treated initially without lymphodepletion chemotherapy. That were, there were 19 patients treated on that portion of the trial. Um, to see which factors um, that are patient related which really correlate with response. Um, we have not done this analysis yet but our early hypotheses are that patients who have a smaller disease burden at the time of treatment may be more amenable to response and then patients with tumor locations that are more accessible to the CAR T cells, so for example, in the bone marrow or in the lungs, um, might respond better than patients with disease in other places. As a sarcoma doctor, I'm always enthusiastic about new treatments. We're desperate, we need new therapies. For these children, these young adults who fail chemotherapy, there are no great, there are no salvage therapies and they do die of metastatic disease. So anything that's new, anything that's promising is a step forward in the right direction. So I think we have to see what's going to come. Do we commit our resources to this program? I think it's too early to say. These are 10 children, 10 young adults, one osteosarcoma, one rhabdomyosarcoma. We need more data to really come up with a firm understanding about where this drug, drug therapy is going and whether it will, it will eventually become a major uh, part of our chemotherapy or immunological therapy arsenal uh, for the treatment of this really rare cancer.